Hey, how's it going? My name's Ryan. Um, I'm in my gap year and I'm here working as an EA at Bethel Christian School. Um, my job kind of revolves around uh, taking kids out and working one-on-one -on -one or in small groups um, just to help them learn, maybe give them um, a different way of learning that might be a bit easier for them. Um, I love to um, play guitar, play drums, uh, play sport, in particular basketball, I love my NBA. Um, and I love my family, I love spending time with them. And for me, something that was quite difficult, I think, was last year my dad got really sick over, uh, he, well, he went on two mission trips and both times he got really sick, one of them. Um, he ended up in ICU um, over in Thailand and for me, my mum and my brother and obviously friends and family, it's quite a difficult time. Um, Dad being, you know, in another country um, in particular, probably one that's, you know, speaks a very different language and maybe not um, the safest. It was quite difficult on all of us, there was a lot of fear, um, anxiety kind of came into the situation. Um, but I know certainly for me and my family what got us through a lot of it was praying and um, you know giving that situation to God and really relying upon the peace um, that came and I think of one in particular um, this was actually so dad had been really sick and he, we finally got him back over but then he went to Perth and he actually had um, he got really he got kind of sick had a it ended up being real dehydrated, but there was quite a bit of fear into, because there was a chance that he would have things happen again because of his previous sickness. Um, but I remember he, he rang us because he was in a hotel by himself. So I picked up the phone and um, he sounded really, really sick. Um, and it was quite traumatic um, for me. But I remember um, mum was off trying to organise a, a taxi or ambulance or whatever for him. But, I remember just going into my room, grabbing my guitar and I just started to worship and really just pray because there wasn't really that much I could actually do, it was, it was kind of out of my control. Um, but one thing I knew I could do was pray and worship God and um, ask for his comfort and ask for his peace and um, ask for his, well, I guess protection over Dad. Um, and as I did, I certainly found that God gave me peace. and. You know, I was able to calm down and um, really think clearly about the situation. So you know, for me, in times of crisis, prayer has really been the answer. You know, talking to God, um, asking Him for help, um, just really going, God, I, I don't know what to do. I can't really do much, Lord. I just need You. But you know, it's often not just those big crisis moments. Um, it's often, you know, when I'm at school working with certain kids and. Um, things aren't going very well or they're, they're um, very frustrated with their work or um, they're quite hard, might be quite hard to deal with sometimes. Um, just going, God, just talking to him and going, I, I need your help. And the truth is um, that, you know, whether it's that big crisis um, or that really small thing, God cares about it all. Um, whether it's big or whether it's small, um, if we're, you know, asking God and we're praying and we're, we're talking to Him and asking Him because we need Him. Um, he cares about it all and so I never really feel, you know, if I'm worried about something I never feel like I should hide it from God or um, not ask it because I know that no matter what, you know, He wants to know what we're caring about um, and what we're worried about and um, certainly wants to know when we need Him um, and when we really really rely upon him in every day. So welcome to Oceans Church Online. Uh, we're in a series on prayer at the moment and it's just been great to hear that story from Ryan about his experience with prayer. So thanks so much for that, Ryan. So Kev, um, long weekend. 
It's school holidays as well, isn't it? It's the double banger. Yeah. Um, so it's, I kind of feel robbed that it's a long weekend. I know. They on the beginning push it of the school the holidays, holiday. don't they? But it's, yeah. it's all good. I'm thankful for it. Yeah. So do you know what the Monday holiday's for? <laughs> no. no. Aussies no, can no. be pretty bad like that, but I, I came prepared. It's actually the Queen's birthday. Wow. Yeah. And so we still celebrate it yeah. in Australia, the Queen's birthday, but it's actually not her birthday this weekend or oh, wow. this Monday. It's her birthday's in April. And uh, I think she's uh, 94 years old. So, so on when you're enjoying your Monday holiday, have a little thought for the Queen's birthday in April. Wow, well, that's an yep. amazing <laughs> fact here, your wealth of knowledge. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm really looking forward to our online um, session today with yeah. Ocean's uh, Campus Online. Yeah. Uh, very shortly, we're going to hear from Pastor Brett on our new theme subject on prayer. Yeah. Prayer is such a powerful thing. I actually think it's such a universal thing. I know when I was really little, before I knew God, I, yeah. I prayed, God, I'm in trouble. Too, help help yeah. me, God. If, you, if you're listening, I'll, if you help me, I'll never do this again. Yeah. So it's quite <laughs> a universal thing. And look, even Jesus said, to his disciples when you pray, not if you pray, because yeah. you kind of assume that everyone will pray. And mm -hmm. as we start this uh, series, I mean, I've just got a, a three simple tips, okay. perhaps for you if you're starting out on your prayer journey, or maybe you want to delve deeper into prayer, really three simple tips. Well, number one is keep it simple. Yeah. Just use simple words and simple sentences. Next, number two is keep it honest. Well, you don't have to be full of joy and happy and in the right frame of mind and mood to get praying. You might be really angry and frustrated. You know what? It's a really good starting point. It might look like, God, I'm frustrated or God, I'm angry because of this. And just keep that um, conversation going, yeah. which brings me to my last tip. Keep it going. Yeah. So, you know, pray for those around you. Bring your requests towards God. Ask God for help. And, um, you know, another... Uh, kind of at the end of that, uh, it's really wise to, or really helpful, sorry, to count your blessings before you're counting your problems before God. Because when you start to count your blessings and you praise God and you're thankful to God, it really help you put your situation into perspective and really cause your faith to rise as you remember that God is good and yeah, He can be trusted. So true, so true. Yeah, you know, as, um, as we consider prayer, it's really good to be inspired by other people's stories yeah. about prayer, just hear how other people relate to God. Even what you said about when you're a child, you'd pray. I remember being a teenager and praying to God as well. You know, I'd lie in my bed at night and pray. I didn't really know God, yeah. but I still, you know, would reach out. But it's good to hear other people's stories. And it's also good to get biblical uh, teaching around prayer so that when we pray, we do pray effectively and we yeah. do make that connection with so God. Good. And yeah, so a bit like counting your blessings beforehand, it's a biblical thing to do yeah. that. And so that we don't feel like our prayers are just hitting the ceiling or yeah. going nowhere. So uh, we're looking forward to the teaching from Pastor Brett this morning. Sure, yeah. And then we'll come back and chat again with you after that. Awesome, see you soon. Well, hi everyone. It's good to be here with you today and uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing a word that God's given me for today. We've all had those times when the phone rings and we have a look at the phone and we think to ourselves, oh, do I really want to talk to that person right now? And we think of reasons why we don't want to talk to them. And so we let the phone ring out or we touch the little icon that says, uh, sorry, I'm driving. We put off the inevitable confronting of the subject because we don't want to address, address it right now. We don't want to be talking about it right now. In a similar vein, I think sometimes it seems like God is trying to talk to us about something. He's trying to let us know something, trying to connect with us. But when we ponder the things that he might want to address, we let the phone ring out. We let him, we leave him hanging. We don't connect with him. The theme for the next few weeks is pray. And I believe that there's a lack of prayer in the Western church and it reflects a people who want, who really don't want God to address some of the things that we know he wants to address in our lives. In avoiding conversation, we avoid relationship and in avoiding relationship, we, we avoid or we miss out on having a really satisfying Christian life. 
Prayer isn't a subject that the, the Bible is quiet about. In fact, one commentator says that uh, he's been studying just prayer in the scriptures for over five years. He says that there's a thousand or more passages about prayer and over 7,000 verses about, about prayer. And yet I felt, I, I really struggled to preach on the topic. I had to really break down my thoughts and try and work out what the blockage was. What I believe God shows me, showed me was that I'm part of a 21st century Western church that loves the theory but struggles to embrace prayer as an action and a necessary part of our relationship with God. I've heard some great messages on prayer. There's no doubt about that. And I think most of us are convinced of the theory about prayer and that it's an important part of the Christian life. But many of us, and I suspect most of us, uh, actually pray very little. And I hope that I'm wrong. And I really don't want those of you who have a healthy prayer life to be offended. Perhaps you, perhaps you could spend some time praying for the rest of us. But it's like this. I'm an outstanding footballer when I'm sitting watching the game on TV. But when I pull the boots on, I'm exposed. I'm also a strong believer in the value of prayer when I'm sitting in the pews. But I'm, I am exposed when I see how little time I put aside for prayer in my daily life. So when we're all convinced about the value of prayer and the need for prayer, but few of us seem to en really engage in it. How do I speak into it? The answer I believe that God showed me is that my role today isn't to convince you of the need for prayer, but that we need to be inspired to pray. Maybe the Holy Spirit can, can indeed inspire us through King David. Today I want us to work our way through one of David's prayers in the hope that it will lift us, lift us off our uninspired backsides and onto our prayer knees. Uh, at Psalm 139, and I'm just going to take it in uh, little chunks and break it down as we go. Psalm 139, we'll start with the first three verses. For the choir director, a psalm of David O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. So let's establish the fundamental truth about what God sees. It's easy really. It's a one word answer. Everything. The fact that you're not picking up the phone to talk to God when he wants to talk to you about stuff isn't fooling him. He hears the angry words you spoke to your spouse this morning. He knows the fears and the anxieties that you carry. He knows the guilt that you're carrying. He's heard you say that you don't have time to pray, but he's also observed that you do have time to download all the TV programs that you've missed So one of the reasons you may not want to pray is because you don't want to expose yourself to the eyes of God. But the reality is he already knows every intimate detail about us. So why not acknowledge that fact by being honest with, us, with him? As a parent, even when our kids have been naughty, we want them to talk about it. We want them to... Uh, to, to just speak with us, talk to us, know, let us know what they're thinking. He's not going to condemn you. God's not going to condemn you. He's going to embrace you because he loves you. So why not pray what David said, Lord, you know everything I do. If you start your prayers like that, we are straight away giving ourselves to God in a vulnerable sort of a way, in a way that we're trusting him. On to verse 4, 5 and 6. You know what I'm going to say 
even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. God wants to be in company with us, to be in relationship with us. When our lives are attacked, he's behind us and in front of us. He's protecting us. He wants to bless us. If you're a parent, contemplate where you'll be if your child is threatened. Your protective arms will be everywhere. They'll be right around the situation. You'll want to bless them with every good thing. Sure, your relationship must include discipline, but you want to be with them through their highs and lows and you want to know their innermost thoughts. Well, you know, God wants to be with you through all your highs, all your lows, and he wants to know your innermost thoughts. He already knows what you're thinking, but he wants you to trust him by putting those thoughts into communication with him. He wants to hear us tell him what we appreciate about him. The depth of his knowledge, the depth of his understanding, anything that comes across your mind that you appreciate about him, he wants to hear. You've all heard the joke about the wife who asked her husband why he doesn't tell her that he loves her anymore. His response was, I told you that I loved you on the day that we got married and I'll let you know if anything changes. That's not relationship, but it's sometimes how we treat God when we neglect to communicate with him. Yeah, I received my, my salvation on March the 20th, 1960. That was great. Thank you for that. I'll let you know if I want something else. That's sort of the way we sometimes treat God. No, appreciate him. Like David did when he prayed, you go before me and follow me. You place, you place your hand of blessing on my head. On to verses 7 to 12. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. How about if I go to church, you are there. If I go to connect group, you are there. If I go to a funeral, you are there. Thankfully, you don't come to work with me. You don't come to the football club with me. And you don't, uh, you're not with me when I'm watching my laptop under the blankets. Let's be real people. We can't escape the presence of the Holy Spirit. We shouldn't want to, but we can't escape the presence of God's Holy Spirit. When your behaviour changes according to the company you're keeping, then you need to know that whatever company you choose to keep, you're taking God with you. David reminds himself in this prayer of the fact that God is always with him. I know from my experience that when I've prayed something, the time immediately after that prayer, I'm always conscious of what I've said. So David was conscious of the fact that God is always with him. I could guarantee that his next day, David would be more, a more holy man, a more righteous man than he would have been if he hadn't prayed that prayer. If you avoid prayer, you can avoid a facing, a facing the reality of wherever you go, God is your company. But you don't want to avoid that reality because it is a rea reality. Tell him like David did, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. Realise that in your life. Down to verse 13 to 16. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. 
Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvellous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. I sometimes hear people say that they don't pray because prayer becomes boring and repetitive and they just don't enjoy it. But how long since you've really used your imagination in prayer? Instead of Jesus heal my finger, how about Jesus it's amazing to think what I can normally do with these hands. I can pick up a single grain of rice. I can work my computer uh, keyboard. I can massage my spouse's neck. What wonderful things my hands are. I appreciate them. And from there, you can flow on into asking for healing of your finger. But just that appreciation of the wonder of what God has made is such a good thing. David expresses the amazing reality that he is a designer baby. He's not a factory clone, but he's a one-off designer baby. Made in his mother's womb with all the potential that God meant him to have. You're not an accident. The same God who designed you in your mother's womb is the God who wants to have a great communicative relationship with you. He designed you for that purpose. He loves you and he wants to to talk with you about whatever's on your mind. If you're impressed with how amazing you are, give God the glory, like David did. He said, thank you for making me so beautifully or so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvellous, how well I know it. David had just appreciated the effort God had gone to in making him. On to verse 17. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. How long since you have contemplated the fact that God is constantly thinking about you? If you would do that, you'd be overwhelmed by his love for you. Most prayers I've prayed in my life have been prompted by self-interest and they usually suggest better ways for God to uh, please me. The older I get, the more I realise that I know diddly squat about what's good for me. But I have a God who is all-knowing, who thinks about me all the time and who wants to bless me. Why not leave, leave the blessings to God, the one who does it best? Instead of giving him a list of things that would please me, I need to tell him that the fact that he thinks of me, that he constantly thinks of me, is a blessing in itself. And that the blessings that he gives me, that comes out of his thoughts and his deliberations about me, are welcome, welcome, welcome in my life. Because I know that they come from a loving, good God. I often text Fiona three or four times a day when I'm at work, not to tell her any news, but just to let her know that I'm thinking of her. And if we really love someone, they're never going to be far from our mind. We're going to be thinking of them. God has revealed to us that he thinks of us all the time. If you love God, you will tell him often that you're thinking of him that you appreciate him. Respond to God as David did. Your thoughts about me, O oh God, they cannot be numbered. He appreciated him. Then down to verse 19 through to 24. O oh God, if only you would destroy the wicked. Get out of my life, you murderers. They blaspheme you. Your enemies misuse your name. O oh Lord, shouldn't I hate those who hate you? Shouldn't I despise those who oppose you? Yes, I hate them with total hatred, for your enemies are my enemies. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me 
that offends you and lead me on the path of everlasting life. One thing that we avoid saying to our spouse when we are young marrieds is uh, if I do anything that you don't like, please tell me. It's not something that we want to do because we make ourselves, we would make ourselves vulnerable to someone who we haven't yet learnt to fully trust with our weaknesses. However, I've noticed after 40 odd years of marriage that Fiona and I prefer to know if we're getting under one another's skin. Our love for one another causes us to want to change. If we're upsetting the other one, we want to change. Vulnerability that we had when we were uh, in a young relationship is replaced by trust. And that's what should happen to a maturing Christian. The feeling of vulnerability and so on that, he may, that you may have as a young Christian, you've learnt to trust God with all your innermost thoughts. David recognised recognize that God isn't going to load him up with a list of his inadequacies. God's not going to tell him to hang his towel up in the bathroom and stop poking his dishes under the lounge room chairs. But he will tell him, Hey David, since you asked, if you were to be more compassionate towards the poor in your kingdom, you'd be more reflective of my nature. That would be good. David doesn't feel vulnerable to ac accusation to God when he says, point out anything in me that offends you. His innermost being trusts that Father God loves him and wants to be part of every thought, every action that he has. Are you willing to trust God with that sort of prayer? Forget shopping list prayers. They're a sign of selfish entitlement. Let's start a new journey of real relationship with God. Tell him you love him and contemplate his awesomeness. And let your prayers grow out of a newfound imaginative enthusiasm inspired by the ever presence of his Holy Spirit. He loves you. He's constantly thinking about you. He's constantly with you. He wants to bless you. Recognise that in your prayers and embrace it. Let's pray. Lord God, you are a wonderful God. We thank you for the fact that you didn't just drop and run, but you stick with us through our lives, through the generations, through our children and our children's children. We thank you, Lord. And we, we, um, we will try to spend more time just appreciating you in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.
There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow. Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. So grateful, so grateful, never forsaken us, always pursuing. So thanks so much, Pastor Brett, for that word. Um, I just, uh, I love the thought that God is always waiting to hear from us. He's always there and waiting for us. And he knows everything that's going on in our lives and that we, he cares about us and he cares about uh, what's going on in our hearts. And, you know, um, I just want to give you an opportunity before we say goodbye today to um, open your heart up for that very first time to Jesus. You know, we, we've talked about praying before we even knew Jesus. Yeah. We've talked about praying as believers, but we, all of us have had that time where we prayed that very significant prayer where we opened our hearts up to Jesus, told him that we believed in him, asked him to be our Lord and Saviour and to forgive our sin. And we just want to give you the opportunity to do that very significant prayer today. So if that's what's happening in your heart and you want to make that first time commitment to Jesus through prayer, why don't you pray along with me as, as I pray now. So Lord, I open my heart up to you today. Forgive me for living my life separate from you. Thank you that you forgive my sin and that you love me unconditionally. Today, I commit my life to you. Lead me in your way from this day forward. Amen. And if you said that prayer for the very first time, you've made a decision yeah. for Jesus Christ, we would love to hear about it and love to hear about your story. So if you want to head over to our website, there's a button that says, I said yes. Click on it, give us a few, a few sentences about what's going on yeah, and one of our pastoral team yeah. will be in touch with you. Mm -hmm. And also before we go, we would just want to continue to thank all those who are supporting Oceans Church. You've called Oceans Church, whether it's a physical church or online, your home church and have been faithfully giving from week to week. So the, our giving options are coming up on the screen right now. You can do those electronically. Thank you so much for seeking first the kingdom of God. And we believe that as right. you continue to do that, God will add all things onto your life. Yeah, so uh, God bless you. Have a great week and we will see you here again next Sunday. Next Sunday. See you guys. Bye.